Good morning guys, welcome to the first day of 2021. It is 8 o'clock in the morning and I hope you guys had a great Christmas and a lovely New Year's Eve. I'm gonna spend my first days of this year with Nick from History Secrets. We're just gonna hang around, film some stuff, shoot some photos. Let's hit the road, let's go. Before we start our photo shoot outside, Nick is kind enough to give us a quick kind enough. tour. <laughs> of course, always. <laughs> Just go this way, all on top. Well, here we start. Uh, we got some equipment. This is most of yeah my U.S. stuff. Well, some most of my U.S. stuff, but it's mostly U.S. Which what, what we got here. Um, <clears throat> I use a lot of this stuff for reenacting. Um, my jacket that I burn in one of my videos. <laughs> uh, overcoat original, I have used this one in the um, 82nd Airborne March. It's in great condition, still got it for a good price. <laughs> I got a medic helmet front seam, Colt 45, which you probably know from a lot of games. Mm -hmm. Awesome pistol, 45 caliber. Um, bayonet, M1 Garand bayonet, another one. Uh, Garen belt, Garand belt I should say. Uh, M1 Garand itself with the bayonet. From the fan mail, really cool. Um, Wait, do you get the knife? Yeah, I got this in the fan mail actually. I, I got some more awesome stuff in the fan mail, so. Nice. But this this one as well. This one is also from the fan mail. <laughs> so that's really, I got a lot of cool stuff from fan mail, so that's amazing. Original phone, <laughs> 1944. Uh, there's more, much more in there and underneath there, but we're not go getting into the small stuff right now. It's also pretty cool. Uh, reversible, as you can see. We got Sumftaren. On the inside, which is a uh, swamp camouflage, splittertan, uh, um, uh field blouse, uh, Luftwaffe stuff, um, a frame, US M1 Grand Belt original with the field bottle. Uh, here we get some more uh, original helmet shells, all restored by me. Uh, winter camouflage, double decal SS, uh, Luftwaffe, um, some uh, reenactment tunics. SS Drillig, which is uh, HPT. Uh, here we got a M40 wool and M36, and all the caps. Uh, the room where you are staying, um, <laughs> where the light is burning. Of course, the light is broken here, right? Because we are filming. There's much stuff to see here. Here we got some British and Canadian stuff, um, which is also really cool. Look at this Brody helmet. Oh man, <laughs> that's cool, right? There are so light compared to the uh, German helmets. But yeah, really iconic model. So that's cool. Uh, so what do you think is the best design helmet? In that, that's second? definitely the German one. Even today, the uh, helmets are designed just as the German ones uh, because it just protects really nice. The thing is, <clears throat> your vision is really good because of this. And this, the way that that's angled, you know, it protects the neck. And it's just a great model, and it's really thick style, uh, which is also uh, great quality, of course. Um, of course, today they did not use uh, steel helmets anymore, but still the design is the best design out there. And these, uh, you know, were real, really for in the trenches, because if something falls from above, you know, it, it hits right there, it protects your shoulders. It's not going to stop a bullet. Uh, the chance is bigger, this is going to stop a bullet. Uh, the chance is bigger for this than that, but still M1 carbine bullet would just go th straight through. If you're lucky, it just bounces off, but uh, no, it's definitely not going to stop a bullet. Maybe pistol round, but again, not designed for bullets, only shrapnel. It's MG34. These are really hard to get, but just look at this beautiful machine gun. Uh, again, all original. All the weapons here are original. Deactivated, but original. Um, still open up the top cover and stuff like that. It's just an amazing machine gun, really hard to get. Um, of course, the MG42 had a much higher rate of fire, uh, but this one was still produced until the end of the war. Uh, the MG42 was a lot cheaper and faster to produce, but again, still produced until the end of the war. MG34, early machine gun. Here we got a flare gun, which is still functional. Opens like this. <laughs> and this was, this goes inside and you will fire a flare. So that's really cool, made from aluminum. Um, 
I had another one that I could buy that was in really good condition, but I like this one because it's completely worn. As you can see, and I like when it's when something is really when worn it's condition. used and has, has yeah, its own story. Exactly. So this one was really you see it's completely worn away. It should be this color right there. It should be black, bluish, mm -hmm. but it's this. So that's what I like. That's history. Um, gas mask canisters, gas masks. A lot of people think think these gas masks are really scary, and I think oh, I have yeah. to I think I have to agree with that. And they always have that strange <gasps> smell. They always smell strange. They all have the same smell. Give me guys my smell. Radio. All Bakelite. Uh, we have a Volks radio. And it even has a small eagle right there in the middle with a swastika. Another Brody. Uh, we have a ZB-30 machine gun right here on the ground. That's a uh, Czechoslovakian uh, machine gun when the Germans invaded Czech, uh, Czechoslovakia. Uh, they captured all these machine guns and were mostly used by the SS because the SS was not a part of the German army yet So they used all these weapons as you can see right here um, I got one hanging there. I found that one in Aachen uh, in an SS position uh, So these were used by the SS and that's also evidence of that I was that was found together with a uh, gas mask canister, which is uh, actually standing over there <laughs> That's a gas mask canister with a gas mask that I found in Germany. All right, so here we have a German soldier. Um, everything original. Uh, we got a helmet, M40 helmet. We have a, the Y straps, early uh, type. Um, shoulder boards, um, nice machine applied eagle. Iron cross, second class. Uh, here we have a nice belt buckle with belt. Two Mauser pouches, uh, Mauser K90AK. Boots, yeah. Everything he's wearing is original. I just gave the officer shoe yep. to him. And you can tell us a lot more about this one. Well, um, first of all, it's an amazing find. Uh, I mean, how lucky can you be just entering a bunker and still being able to find something like this is really incredible. Uh, what I think is really interesting about this one is uh, you can see that it's been cut right there. So I was thinking about maybe the German soldier uh, was wounded or something and they had to cut this off. I have no clue. Uh, but the interesting thing here on the bottom, you can still see the holes where the hop nails were and the front piece. Let me show you right here. Um, these are these are replica ones. Um, I use these for reenactment. I have not worn them before. That's why they look new. doesn't matter. Um, if we take a look, the size is definitely smaller, but you can see those small holes, those were where these hop nails were placed. You see all the small, yeah, it's pr probably pretty hard to see on the camera, but you can see all the small holes. So that's where these were. And this, you can still see, this shoe iron was also right there. And here on the back of the shoe, you can still see this iron part, which is right there. You still see the nails. So that is really interesting. So that, that's definitely German. And um, yeah, it's in pretty good condition still. It's pretty hard, but it's not really, it's not bad, it's not falling apart. You can see all the di different layers of leather. It's the only thing I'm um, trying to find out is uh, this. It's, it's made in two separate pieces. Um, so that's interesting. You can also see there was something there, so I was thinking about maybe there was a strap attached um, with a buckle maybe. see that a lot of times. There are so many different types of shoes and boots, so... But it's definitely from the period and it's really, really interesting, so... Uh, congratulations with that find and uh, thank you for um, giving this to me because now it's a part of, a part of my collection and uh, I thought it was really cool that he actually called me, uh, you know, he video called me and he asked me about this and it was really cool to just see that um, and I could confirm that it was actually from the Second World War, so uh, that was really cool. Hello. <laughs> we are in your bunker. Oh, yep, and I just stood in the chicken coop. It is time to set up the set and yep. then take some photos. Yep. And then afterwards we are going to edit these photos.
What's your opinion so far about the pictures that you made? I think it was better than last time. Yeah. We had a lot of experiment with lightning and, yeah. and with poses. Pictures last time was uh, were also really cool, but I, uh, you showed me a couple of the pictures and I mm. think they're gonna be really amazing. Now uh, we need to send them to your computer. Which is gonna take a thousand years because it's going really slow, but yeah. The okay. files are really big. And I'm still in my uniform, so I need to put on my normal clothes again. <laughs> You also can see the call on the on the on the photos. Yeah, I hope really, you can see that. It's really. Uh... And otherwise, you can just put an effect like it's cold or something. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> we are going back to my editing room and edit some photos. But we are going to have some coffee right now and just relax. Coffee, standing on coffee. Haha, jawohl. See you guys in his room. Hoppa. All right, so I just imported all the photos that I shot. As you can see, uh, we are going to edit these photos together. Well, one of the photos together. So you can have a look on how I edit my photos and give them that final touch that makes them really good. Here's an example. This is before and this is after. I think I have one here, this one. Let me get it on full screen here before after the gun is standing out pretty well there is light behind his helmet you can see the background of the bunker is really nice setup let's edit this one because it is good I, I didn't even touch this one so normally I just start with a random thing and see how it goes from there let's start with with a fine curve mm, high contrast and detail yeah that would be good and what I wanted to do now is I wanted to remove some colors. The yellow one and the orange one. So I will, we will make it really cold. So this orange color you can see on his face. Now it's, it's turning really warm. It looks like his face is a little bit burnt right now. That's not the look that we wish for right now. So we need to give him that slight look at that. Look at that cold it looks really white like he is battling for three days straight slightly increase the blue color so the helm will pop out now let's see before and after right now before bomb after you see it's a minute completely different already let's get some details back and let's focus on the soldier here uh, get a vintage look around it look what happened right now if we are making it black and, uh, black and white, that will work, or a little bit of color. And what I want to do now is I want to give it, ah, that's too green. We can make the soldier really, oh, yeah. This is now looking as a World War II black and white photo that is colorized. This was it. I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions about photos or videos that I make, comment below and I will uh, read them and reply on them. And I will see you guys in the next video. Whoa.